Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from Sort of Interesting and today you're joining me out on the beautiful Langothlin Canal at sunset. Why aren't we in good old narrowboat Abel's Ark, I hear you ask? Well, because my inverter is blown, I completely forgot that as the sunset uh, starts to creep in and the light uh, dips, I obviously can't use my proper bright LED lights. So. Filming on the boat in the evenings and at night time is a bit of a no-no at the moment unless I get uh, some torches on board or something or just to get a new inverter. So I suppose we're going to charge ahead regardless with the video I had planned for today anyway which was all about some of the random things that nobody ever told me about boats and boat life and the canals before I bought a boat. Now it's important to remember that seven years ago when I first bought Narrowboat Tilly and set out about boat life I didn't have access to the unbelievable sources of the internet as they are today. There weren't loads and loads of videos and channels on YouTube dedicated to the canals. There were some of the magazines had websites and question and answer se sections and some of the um, sort of independent places as well online were doing things like that. However in comparison to today where you can look up any given random topic about boats and find all sorts of videos demonstrating stuff um, it was a lot more simpler and basic time I suppose now that's actually just before we get into the video properly part of why I managed to get so many subscribers on YouTube because I was the first person doing proper regular boat life vlogs and stuff like that so I whoop, managed to hoover up the audience early on um, but let's flip the camera around so you can see the beautiful beautiful surroundings here at uh, sunset with the pastel blue sky above us there absolutely fantastic you can even just see that little hint of pinky purple in it over there too I'm sure we'll see a lot more sky and a lot better colour balance once we get from underneath the trees here. So, the first thing I would say that nobody ever told me and that it took me a couple of days of my original big old boat trip after I bought Narrowboat Tilly all those years ago to uh, figure out after a boater shouted it at me uh, in a good spirited manner I'd say across from his boat was that boats actually travel in the opposite direction to cars. And what I mean by that is that you pass on the right hand side with boats, whereas the road traffic in the UK would be on the other side, if that makes any sense at all. So let's just say for argument's sake, if we had a boat coming up this direction and a boat coming down this direction, then the boat heading up there would pull over to the right as obviously the boat coming down towards us would also be doing the same and going to their right and pass in that manner. So when I was on my original boat trip back from uh, Stafford to this sort of area around the Ellesmere area in Shropshire, I had travelled the first couple of days not knowing that and darting into what I was considering sort of the safe side of the canal where you had the uh, solid bank where people could moor up and stuff rather than the shallow, rocky, muddy side of the canal over there. So when I uh, did that with this one chap, he sort of didn't intentionally force me up against the side but because he'd obviously anticipated me moving over to the right hand side which in that case would have been the off side um, he obviously didn't leave me much room so I ended up pulling the boat over and grabbing all of the ropes and standing on the bank while he went past and goes hey you know you're meant to pass on the right hand side so that was the first thing um, next up and hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of footage on the screen for this um, I was amazed and well sort of a bit bamboozled to discover that what I'd always thought about boats meeting at bridges was just common knowledge and the general way that things were done. Wow, look at that for a, a sunset over there. Let's get the camera to focus on that for a moment or two. Look at that, absolutely fantastic, that. Goodness me, I just I love this. After the sun's actually set, you've got the pastel colours and the sort of wisps of cloud. I'm not sure what the, uh, the actual name of those particular clouds are. It's normally one of my sort of um, areas to know these random facts about alto cumulus lenticularis and so on. Um, but anyway, 
boats meeting at bridges. Now, I was told by different people and always operated under the idea that if two boats arrived at a bridge at the same sort of time, then the boat that was traveling with the flow of water would be the first boat to uh, go through and the other boat would give way. However, when I said that in a video ages ago, loads of people, and I mean uh, a lot of people, piped up and saying, what on earth are you talking about? I've never heard that in all my years on the canal. And so, uh, yeah, that's just a random thing, but it's something that I've uh, almost entirely avoided because I have a simple uh, thing, which is I'm not in a rush to get anywhere. If I think that there's going to be any sort of confusion arriving at a bridge or if there's boats moored up and it's narrow to get two boats past the moored up boat in places, then I'll just simply fetch my boat over to the side hop off, grab hold of a rope and hold it in and allow the other boat to come down and pass me. In a similar way to if there's any boats, particularly uh, holiday boats that have got a destination to get to within a given time, then I will simply uh, pull over if they're coming up behind me and I can see they're in a hurry, um, although that's not really the idea with the canal and a canal boat, then I'll just pull over to the side and let them carry on and then I don't have to think about it. And here, I shall uh, take a moment to just clear my throat and have a drink as we focus in on some sunset sheep there. Okay, so without an inverter to allow me to run the proper LED lights, I've only got these very feeble roof lights that I can rely on. So I've got the light on the camera shining and dazzling me here, which is probably making me look absolutely horrendous in 4K, so brightly lit, and also showing up how smudged and everything things like the stainless steel <laughs> oven back are. So one of the things that nobody could have possibly prepared me for, even if they'd have told me, is about the temperature and temperature control on the narrowboat. Now, some of you may have seen people and myself many times say, you get the classic questions about, is it cold in the winter and stuff like that? When actually, because you're heating such a small space with a proper wood burning fire as well, it can get extremely warm and you can literally have to open the windows and doors. Well, there's literally ice and snow outside in the winter months because it is that hot on board sometimes. So more so than being too cold, I'd say I've many, many more times and more frequently been too hot in the winter, believe it or not. There's also another layer to that, which is when you're doing stuff like cooking, oh, cooking, boiling a kettle, or I don't know, making yourself some super noodles, for example, um, then of course, again, you've got a very, very hot item sending a load of heat into the boat. And you can imagine during the summer months, or if it's really warm on board, if the stove's going, the amount of times that when I start cooking, and I use the term cooking for what I do very loosely there, but the amount of times that even just having the hobs on and the oven on, or even the grill, that I have to open a window or open the door because it's making it way too hot on board is another thing that nobody would have prepared. I would have just never believed it. And I would imagine there's people here who are still underestimating it, as I say, that I wouldn't believe it if someone told me. Now, I'd like to end this video with something a little bit more sort of out there in terms of things nobody told me about boat life. And that's that it should be a lot more relaxed than my initial time on board Narrowboat Tilly was. As a generally jittery and nervous character, suddenly taking ownership of a boat and then having an awful lot of stuff to be more jittery and nervous and worry about and think about. The first, uh, I don't know how long really, but the first period of boat life was mixed with the absolute joy of seeing everything for the first time and being out and about on the canals and the excitement, but also this huge amount of fear and terror and worry of like, oh, what if the boat's here? What if that's not right? What if I'm in people's way moored up? What if this happens? What if that happens? And I suppose the real thing is that I wish somebody had just been there to say, don't worry about it. People are laid back in general. Nobody's going to be whinging or complaining if you're taking ages to get through the Ellesmere Tunnel or Chirk Tunnel because you're uh, walking it through with a rope because you don't want to scrape the sides or anything on the walls. And again, there's loads of little things like that that I'd have definitely done differently. And it's something that I've said to other people like, don't worry, there's going to be things that will be playing on your mind and all sorts of different things will go on. But in general, 
out and about on the canal, I've met some of the friendliest, most knowledgeable people that I've ever come into contact with and had offers of help for this, that and the other and all sorts of offers for different things to do with Narrowboat Tilly and people who would try and give me stuff just out and about. And well, again, it, it's extraordinary. And it's another one of those things that I just think, I wish somebody had just said to me, Dan, it's gonna be okay. Take your time, relax, breathe, and just enjoy your time on a narrowboat. So if you're heading into boat life, then I'd say speak to people, talk to your neighbours. If you're more up in the evenings, feel free to uh, give somebody behind you a nod and see if they're uh, a friendly character or not, and uh, see what wisdom they have to impart to your newly acquired narrowboat life. Anyway, I suppose as I'm walking into the shadows here, the very thing I came out of the boat to avoid, uh, video filming in the dark, I will simply say thank you so much for tuning in. I know that recently my videos have been a bit all over the place, but there is a reason for that, which you'll figure out or you'll learn in about two weeks time, maybe. And well, until the next time, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you haven't already. And please do consider checking out my short books about boat life available for the Kindle and as a paperback. Until the next time, though, my friends, have an absolutely fantastic day. Keep it interesting. Keep it boat worthy. And of course, my friends, farewell.